is Unsettled Souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. the Ganji of The Media Speaks, doing political commentary for uh, The Media Speaks. Uh, correct Views here. Guys, do me a favor, hit subscribe, hit subscribe now so that you can share this information when I post. Um, Get it out to other people. I've also been uh, making sure that I post on caucus nights, and I'm going to try to keep doing that. Um, Saturday is an awful day for me to post at night, but I'm going to do my damnedest to uh, go ahead and get it up for you. Oh, now all the feminists tell me, he's a sexist this freak. All right, friends. Um, Yahoo.com spy agencies say Clinton emails closely match top secret document sources. Now, I'm going to try to do something I don't know I'm going to do. I'll see if I can appeal to both the left and the right here. Let me put my halo on. Let me see if I get this going. Does it work? Nothing on Google ever works. Oh, there it is. There's my halo. All right. Let me go ahead and make sure that it does, in fact, appear on camera. Okay. I've got my halo on my head, which is now I've got to shrink down. Google is terrible. Nothing works like the way it's supposed to. All right. You've got this. So here we go. I've got my halo on. We're going to compare the angelic Mrs. Clinton to the average person. Here we go. Uh, Mark Hosenball. Here's what he writes. My halo's on now, so here we go. U.S. spy agencies have told Congress that Hillary Clinton's home computer server contains some emails that should have been treated as top secret because their wording matched sections of some of the government's most highly classified documents. Four sources familiar with the agency report said. Now, let's reword that, shall we? Since Hillary Clinton is just like everybody else, let's, let's reword that to U.S. law enforcement have told the FBI that the average Joe's home computer server contained emails that talked about shipping large amounts of marijuana across the country. Okay, she's a regular person, right? We got two stories going here. Now, what's worse, classified information, which could lead to the death, destruction, or economic ruin of millions of American citizens, or smoking pot. We've got our two stories here. Again, the second one is imaginary, but we're going we're gonna to see how average and normal Mrs. Clinton is. The two reports are the first formal declarations by the U.S. spy agencies detailing how they believe Clinton violated government rules when highly classified information in at least 22 email messages passed through her unsecured home server. Okay, she's a normal person, right? The two reports are the first formal declaration by local law enforcement agencies de de detailing how they believe the average Joe violated federal marijuana rules when he was agreeing to send 22 pounds of marijuana across the country. We're going to compare. We're going to see how normal Mrs. Clinton is. So you on the left, you on the left, this is for you. I've got my halo on. The State Department has already acknowledged that the emails contains top secret intelligence, though it says they were not marked that way. It was not previously been clear if the emails contained four classified documents or only some information on them. Okay. Well, the, the law enforcement says that, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Average Joe has already said that he has some connections to marijuana. But those are all legal and done in legal states. He wasn't aware that it was illegal to drive through other states with him. We got our comparison, right? Now, what's worse, a top secret screw up or a marijuana screw up? The agencies did not find any top secret documents to pass through Clinton's server in their full version, the forces, the sources told Congress and the government's executive branch. So the average Joe doesn't spell out exactly where. He, how he's getting the weed across the country, but you know that he is. However, the agency reports found that some emails included passages that closely tracked or mirrored communications marked top secret, according to the sources, who all requested anonymity. In some cases, additional classification markings meant access was supposed to be limited to small groups or specifically cleared officials. So our average Joe, you see, 
the average Joe there, he had marijuana coming and he had ties to legal marijuana growers, but he was still bringing it through states where it wasn't legal. So let's see who gets prosecuted here. Under the law, the U.S. government rules, the U.S. officials and contractors may not transmit any classified information, not only documents, outside secure government control channels. Such information should not be sent even through the government's.gov email network. Even that is not secure enough. So, by comparison, my halo on here, the average Joe, um, it, no, matter, no matter what he didn't know or did know at the time, it is in fact illegal to transport weed in non-weed legal states. So we got Clinton and our imaginary weed guy here. Clinton's just like him, remember, the average guy. The front runner for the Democratic nomination for president and former Secretary, Secretary of State has insisted she broke no rules. Clinton's lawyer, David Kendall, did not respond to a request for comment. And Clinton campaign spokesman did not respond to multiple requests for comment. Of course, average Joe, by comparison now, average Joe has said he doesn't know anything about breaking any rules at all and says that he's innocent. He shouldn't go to prison. Two sources said some of the top secret material that related to the CIA's campaign of drone strikes against Islamist militants in the Middle East and South Asia. Um, by, there would be no comparison other than we have lots of emails proving that weed guy, average Joe, was going to send a lie. This isn't a paragraph for paragraph explanation here. That campaign has been widely reported by Reuters and other media outlets, but it officially is classified as a top secret special access program meaning only a limited number of people whose names are on the special list are allowed to learn the details that are in it. Therefore, she is blatantly, by her own admission, messed up. She lied. One source, or sins of omission, if you will. One source said the reports identified some information and messages on Clinton's server that came from human sources, such as confidential CIA informants, who are now ruined. And some from technical systems, such as spy satellites or electronic eavesdropping. It goes on that the Clinton campaign criticized the State Department's decision last month to withhold 22 emails containing top secret information from the public, blaming it on bureaucratic infighting and overclassification run amok. So she knows that there is no way that the government can release the emails that she jeopardized. But she is saying that because they won't tell you how she screwed up and further jeopardize the country, that she therefore is innocent because they won't incriminate themselves by putting the country at the same danger that she does. That's not the way that works, Mrs. Clinton. I do hate to be the one to inform you that. As we have previously made it clear, we are not going to speak in the content of the emails the State Department official said. So basically, she is caught sending not only classified, but top secret information over an unsecured server that was located in someone's bathroom. And she gets the run for president of the United States. Now, let's not forget about average Joe, of which uh, Hillary Clinton is just like, remember? All right. Average Joe got the walk Scott free and he got to get a good job and nobody bothered him at all, right? They never bother the average Joe. Well, no, you're going to say, all right, that's different. That's a marijuana offense. You're talking about drugs. Okay. What's worse? 22 pounds of marijuana coming into your country without well, your state, your city, your town, whatever, without you knowing about it. Or classified and for top secret information which could quite likely be anything from nuclear information related to weaponry in north korea we're going to go with the time scale of which she did this here it could have to do with nuclear issues in iran it could have to do with what kind of infrastructure iran is using and how they're preventing terrorist attacks but if she's sending that under an unsecured server for instance I'll, I'll change my symbol here to a question mark. What do you think happens now? So, bringing, to use the analogy, 22 pounds of weed into your community 
would likely result in a prison sentence if they could prove it for average Joe. Hillary Clinton has multiple documents that were top secret and classified, and she gets to run for president? I'm sorry, there is no way, whether you are on the left or right, that you can be in favor of that. Absolutely not. Epic fail. Um, Freebeacon.com. China warns the U.S. after Trump wins Nevada caucus. Now, this has to be the most pretentious, uppity, self-serving, derogatory, arrogant, pompous, bastard speech that I have ever heard that this ridiculous Chinese diplomat gives. They have stolen jobs from the U.S., they posted a couple of years ago on a picture of the globe at a convention. They posted a nuclear mushroom exploding over the United States. Claimed they had noticed it. Oh, they had noticed it. Oh, do you believe that? <laughs> at a convention, they steal our jobs. They are constantly talking down about America. They're buying up the country in droves, and they're going to whine about Donald Trump wanting to keep the money in the country. Listen to this pretentious bastard. Um, China war. No, I'm so afraid. Wait, wait. We got we to gotta do this right. Here we go. China warned the United States on Wednesday not to adopt punitive currency policies. Oh, that would disrupt U.S.-China relations after Donald Trump wins the Nevada caucus. You can go to hell. Foreign Ministry spokesman Hua Cheying told reporters in Beijing that we are following with interest the U.S. presidential election. Now, see, that's not a direct word-for-word uh, -word translation. What was said in China is we are whining because we are not going to be allowed to steal your jobs and your future and your economy anymore. I'll translate this for you as we go. It's why you tune in. You'll love it. Um, Hal asked about China's response to a possible Trump presidency and his announced plan to punish China for currency manipulation with a tax on Chinese goods. Since it belongs in the domestic affair of the U.S., I am not going to make comments on specific remarks by the relevant candidate, she said. Now, again, I, I, I'm fluent in, uh, in Chinese, allegedly. And uh, I do believe the direct translation for that particular sentence, especially with the yahuya part that was in it, I definitely believe what she was saying is, we don't want to say anything else to piss off Trump because we are about to get our dishonest asses handed to us. I'm pretty sure that's a word-for-word -word translation. I'm going to go on. I, I, I think Those of you that speak Chinese, let me know if I'm right. It says, I want to stress that China and the U.S., as world's largest developing and developed countries, shoulder, and sound like that's right, shoulder responsibilities in safeguarding world peace, stability, and security and driving world development, the spokesman added. Now, see, that's a very piss poor uh, interpretation. My Chinese has taught me that what she said is the United States is about to elect somebody that is sick of allowing us to be ripped off by China so that they can claim that destroying the American economy results in peace, stability, and security, which would drive world development. That's a much better translation. I'm going to do this all the way through for you so you can truly understand what this idiot said. The sustained sound and steady growth of the U.S.-China really relations serves the fundamental and long-term interests of both countries and benefits the world. We hope and believe that the U.S. government will pursue a positive policy toward China in a responsible manner. That's not what she said at all. What she said was, we hope America is not sick of getting hosed because the only way that our country can move forward is by stealing your jobs and your future. And we need you to elect somebody that's an idiot like Bernie Sanders. 
Um, the comments came as Wang Yi, the, a good name, the, the Chinese foreign minister, is holding talks on Washington that include U.S. concerns about Chinese military buildup on disputed islands in the South China Sea. In other words, Donald Trump, please let us steal the islands off the Japanese, even though the Japanese have had it forever. So you've got China having an absolute freak out here about Donald Trump speaking what absolutely needs to happen. There is no other way to word it, friends. This absolutely has to happen. It's why we are voting for him. It's why libertarians like me are going to go ahead and bite the bullet on this, as it were. Uh, let me go ahead and play a piece of what Donald said here that's absolutely correct. You know, uh, and I think the reason we're resonating is we have to straighten out our trade deals are horrible. With China, we lose in trade $500 billion a year. What kind of a deal is that? With Japan, we lose hundreds of billions of dollars. It's much smaller than China, but hundreds. We owe China's having a freak out because this man right here is speaking the absolute truth. And I love when people go ahead and question the logic and they say, uh, one of the things I heard from a lot of people is, what if Donald Trump is wrong about, for instance, the gun issue? And we're going at it this way. The, I call them terrorists. When the terrorists attacked the Eagles death metal concert, I want to say what, they killed 128 people. Um, people like me immediately said that there needed to be firearms allowed in the building. Now, again, I'm not an idiot. I'm a mosh pit fan myself. And I don't think you should be in the mosh pit with a gun on your waist or your ankle. That's probably not a great idea. But that is not the majority, usually, of the concert goers and the concert goers should be allowed to have a gun in a public place because where guns are not allowed the criminals will bring guns and shoot you dead or people always say sam sam you're wrong you weren't there you weren't there all right let's hear from someone that was there breitbart.com Trump supporting Eagles of Death Metal singer says guns could have stopped the Paris attacks. The singer of the band that was on stage has agreed with me. Who would like to argue with me now? That's what I thought. Eagles of Death Metal frontman, and he's been very vocal, and this has bothered him greatly. Jesse Hughes claimed that if everyone had guns, the Bataclan massacre may not have happened as he returned to Paris Tuesday to play in front of hundreds of survivors of November's terror attacks. In a series of highly emotional interviews, to say the least, the American singer said France's strict gun control laws were a massive success. No, that's not what he says. France's strict gun control laws had nothing to do with the jihadist attack in which 90 fans died, but he questioned whether gun control had saved any lives at the Bataclan. I don't think so. I think the only thing that stopped it was some of the bravest men that I've ever seen in my life charging headfirst into the face of death with their firearms. I know people will disagree with me, but that night, guns made them equal, the 43-year-old told French TV El Tele. I think that's how it said. And I state it this way. Until nobody has guns, everybody has to have them. Hughes is a member of the American National Rifle Association, thank God, and supporter of Republican presidential candidate Donald freaking Trump, the person who was there. Yes, don't give me this BS that it wouldn't have helped. He's like, I don't go anywhere in America without a gun anymore, and that sucks. And I'm not paranoid. I'm not a cowboy, but I want to be prepared. Good for him. Absolute epic win. And go ahead and save this video. Give it to other people. Let them know. No, this is absolute BS because we know full outright the people, the singer of the band that had this horrible thing go down around him says guns would have helped. I, mean, I, said, I shouldn't even have to report such logic. 
but somehow I'm telling you people are idiots. Daily Mail about co.uk. Listen to this. This was a creepy cold story. Was it Pink Floyd? Listen to nearly released NASA audio of mysterious music Apollo 10 astronauts heard on the far side of the moon. Now, I'm more inclined to believe this than I am the we never landed on the moon crowd. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I'm so tired of hearing about people saying, well, the flag fluttered on the moon and the moon doesn't have any atmosphere. So how did it flutter? The flag is tin. It's not fluttering. It's bent. It's tin. Also, anybody with a decent computer, there's a beacon on the freaking moon that was put there by us. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm this, this, I, I, I get comments all the time. Do you see the flag flutter on the moon? The flag did not flutter on the moon. Our flag and flutters before us. They're obsessed with it. Uh, Apollo astronauts who orbited the moon two months before Neil Armstrong's famous 1969 landing heard mysterious and unexplainable music on its far side out of the, out of the range of earthly radio transmission as it emerged. That means that this was not earthly music that was absolute, accidentally being picked up on NASA's radio. That is a scientific impossibility, so don't go there. Recently unearthed recordings made by NASA of the journey, which took the Apollo 10 capsule around the far side of the moon, shows the astronauts reacting with surprise and confusion to an unearthly howling noise in their headsets. The sound began once the capsule was on an hour-long trip around the far side of the moon, the Trump moon, out of the range of any Earth broadcast. At one point, the baffled astronauts can be heard discussing whether they should tell NASA command or not. In other words, they were hardly looking for attention. They were more worried about not being humiliated by their bosses and the entire country. Sorry for the ridiculous picture of Drake on the sidebar here. What an untalented idiot freak. You hear that? The whistling sound. Woo, one of them says. Another astronaut says, I, he can. It sounds like, you know, outer space type music, which is even creepier. Well, that sure is weird music, his companion agrees. And no, the music has nothing to do with Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon that was released four years later. These sounds, in other words, they weren't basing it on some new uh, hip craze. It wasn't buried in their subconscious. That album hadn't come out yet. These sounds lasted almost the whole hour that the capsule was on the far side of the moon. And back on Earth, the recording was shelved by NASA until 08 when it was declassified. Now it has resurfaced in the upcoming third season of Science Channel's NASA's Unexplained Files. So, I mean, you can see a piece of it here as I, uh, as I read it on. Um, oh, they're probably going to give you some ridiculous ad, so I may not even bother. Um, there's an awesome picture of it. On the show, Apollo 15 astronaut Al Warden says the Apollo 10 crew was very confused. The kind of noise that they would be hearing. Logic tells me that there is something recorded on there. And then there was something there. And, uh, I mean, listen to this. Here, I got the ad over for you. Apollo 10 entered lunar orbit. As they pass around the far side of the moon, the astronauts lose all contact with Earth. It's about an hour on the back side of the moon, away from Earth, where you lose radio contact. During this hour, the astronauts are on their own. No one on Earth can see or hear them. Now, it's important to note that this isn't something they made up. They actually didn't have technology to transmit from there at the time that they were there. When they emerged, they seem to have survived their voyage around the far side and escaped. Just so you can tell the world that we have arrived. As far as anyone on Earth knows, this mission is going like clockwork. Everything according to plan. There's nothing irregular going on at all. But nearly four decades later, lost. If I don't keep stopping it, they won't let me use it. I have to comment on it or it's illegal. Um, I, otherwise, I'd put all this at the end. Um, 
the music wasn't immediately recorded so that they would not be pretty much ridiculed and lose their entire careers. Recordings emerged revealing an unsettling incident on the far side of the moon. There are recorders that record whatever's going on on the back side and then you do a data dump when you come around the front side and Houston or Mission Control then can see what happened when you were on the back side. After the NASA astronauts returned to Earth. Roger, Houston, we are returning to the Earth. Now, again, using fact cam here behind me, they're going to give you a little bit of an insight as to what it is I'm talking about here. NASA transcribes the tapes, then buries them in the archives without comment. These conversations are recorded in the transcripts, but those transcripts were classified. NASA would withhold information from the public if they thought it was in the public's best interest. Even at So I'll let you guys look up the rest. I don't want to lose all my viewers here, but let me ask you. Where did they get this? I mean, it came out in 08. It was classified. I don't know, maybe it came out of Hillary Clinton's server. But uh, in any event, that is interesting. That is really interesting. I mentioned this because I do the news from the science front on the Media Speaks every Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. on the coast. Um, I've been swarmed with the coolest of science news lately, and some of it I want to get to. I'll get to more weird stuff later that you're all waiting for and political stuff. But, I mean, I just gave you a whole beginning of it. I gave you the Trumpster and everything else. you got to get away from it, friends, or you'll, you'll lose your mind. Dailymail.co.uk, what would happen if the Earth fell into a black hole? Well, there are three theories, and I'll let you guys look up the rest of it. But here is what it could, the three scenarios. One, spaghettification. If you stray too close to a black hole, then you will stretch out, just like spaghetti. This effect is caused due to the gravitation gradient across your body. In other words, it pulls so hard that you wouldn't have time to not be almost like a rack. You wouldn't be, you'd be racked. Uh, the other theory is uh, radiation. Long before we would be spaghettified, the sheer power of this radiation would fry us. Uh, that's the one that is absolute fact, I would imagine. Three, you could transform into a hologram. One theory is that the material touching a black hole becomes an imperfect copy of itself, continuing to exist as before. That's another one that I'm partial to because of the likelihood of that being um, where the Earth is like a hologram. I, I'm a firm believer in that. Uh, if you, don't you Christian? Yes, I, I, I believe that that's likely the way God did it. That's not to say he couldn't have done it any other way. It doesn't deviate anyone's faith. But I do believe that none of this is real. I, I within the last uh, five, six years, have been seeing things about the Earth is a simulation. The reality is a simulation. Uh, the two slits experiment. Look it up on YouTube. Just type in two slits experiment. You'll see exactly what I'm speaking of here. Um, guys, I got three more stories to get to, and they are all brought to you by StickerJunkie.com. You're looking at it here on Fact Camp. Go to stickerjunkie.com. You're going to get the coolest stickers that you have ever had made. They're going to look amazing. And if you type on the way out the correct views, type correct views, the promo code, you're going to save more money on these stickers than the already good deal that Sticker Junkie gets. So go to stickerjunkie.com or your stickers and make sure you go ahead and type in the correct views or the correct views on the way out. Um, this is absolutely wonderful news in every way, shape, or form. Whether or not you do smoke weed or not, you probably know someone who does. And guess what? It is not affecting their IQ. <laughs> now, I know that there's a lot of people that have said forever, you the typical body. So I'll be bringing back the Bunny Puff character. It'll happen around uh, April Fool's Day, I promise. Um, we all like to make fun of the, for those of you that don't know what Buddy Puff is, look it up on my channel, type in correct news, Buddy Puff. Um, we all like to make fun of the potheads, but science is science, friends. Emily Underwood. Twins study finds no evidence that marijuana lowers IQ in teens. That's even better news because it was thought to be likely harmless or not very harmful to adults, but it was supposed to lower the IQ of uh, 
teenagers greatly. And teenagers, of course, smoke massive amounts of marijuana. Well, it's not true. So excellent news here on the correct news. Roughly half of Americans use marijuana at some point in their lives, and many start as teenagers. Although some studies suggest that the drug could harm the maturing adolescent brain. No, I think that would probably be Kanye. The true risk is controversial. Now, in the first study of its kind, scientists have analyzed long-term marijuana use in teens, comparing IQ changes in twin siblings who either used or abstained from marijuana for 10 years. After taking environmental factors into account, the scientists found no measurable link between marijuana use and lower IQ. There's a link right there. I'm running my mouse over it on fact cam. Absolutely a wonderful news. This is a very well conducted study and a welcome addition to the literature, says Valerie Curran, the, the psychopharmacologist at the University College of London. Well, that's jolly good news. She and her colleagues reached broadly the same conclusions in a separate non twin study of more than 2,000 British teenagers published earlier this month in the Journal of Psychopharmacology, she says. There's another study. There's another link. See the mouse on back cam. But warning the study has important limitations. George Patton, a psychiatric epidemiologist at the Uni of Melbourne in Australia, warns that it is in no way proves that marijuana, particularly heavy or chronic use, is safe for teenagers. Well, see, now they're broadening it. First of all, it was terrible for the teenage brain. And of course, now, well, it... it it might not be healthy, but nobody ever said it was a health food. But the point is, it is, it's not creating all of the problem and all of the panic and all of the whining that everyone said that it would. It simply isn't the case. And friends, that brings us to the dumdies. More than one, there's two today. Dumdies of the day. Parents sue school for forcing daughter to convert to Islam. You can't make this up. If I tried to, I wouldn't have been able to make it up, friends. The dumb, dumb, dumb these of the day. Um, Alan Salazar, Prison Planet. Parents in Maryland are suing public school administrators over concerns that a classroom lesson attempted to indoctrinate their daughter into the Islamic faith. Now let's pretend for a second that this was happening with Christians. You'd have them thrown to the lions, especially if this happened in California. In an incredible lawsuit filed by the U in the U.S. District Court last week, Melissa Wood and her husband John Wood, an eight-year U.S. Marine veteran, Corps, Marine Corps veteran, excuse me, claimed the La Plata public school violated the First Amendment by promoting Islam over other faiths, such as Christianity or Judaism. Well, of course, because you're not allowed to be a Christian or a Jew. Everybody will hate you. The Woods claim their daughter identified as CW in court documents obtained by InfoWars has assigned lessons and homework in their 11th grade world history class, which requires students to profess statements on the teachings and beliefs of Islam <coughs> in written worksheets as graded homework assignments violating the family's Christian faith. According to the lawsuit, CW and her classmates in the, and classmates in the 11th grade world history were instructed that most Muslims' faith is stronger than that of the average Christian. Oh, yeah, because they dress you in burqa and threaten to blow you up if you don't. Additionally, CW also had to profess the, sh the Shahada by claiming there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Now, let's pretend you had to profess the uh, born again Christianity to Jesus. People would have a fit. But it's Islam, so it's okay because Muhammad slept with a nine year old. This statement is true. This statement is in direct contradiction to the CW's deep-seated Christian belief and beliefs and heritage, and it is sinful to express that there is any other God besides the monotheistic Christian God. Amen. So you have this, what was the name of it? The, the La Plata School, 
epic, epic dumb fail for them. I hope they get drilled for that lesson. I really do. It wasn't like they were teaching what they believe. They were making the girl do it, I believe. And here, HollywoodReporter.com, if there is a more talented, or less talented, excuse me, more arrogant person in the whole world, I don't know who it is. First of all, Kanye's music sucks. His voice sucks. His breathing sucks. His wife is an arrogant twat. And his music has to be played on the radio a million times in order to get anyone at all to listen to it. And it normally only happens when you're trapped at work and can't get away from it. The man absolutely sucks. Terrible. I hope that this stupid bastard gets exactly what he's asking for. Because if it means that we have less Kanye on the radio, if it means that we have less weekend songs on the radio, then dear God in heaven, please let him be right. This stupid, arrogant prick writes, I love, love, love white people, but you don't understand what it means to be the great grandson of ex-slaves and make it this far. You bonehead we have grandfathers who were poor and who were abused and they ended up presidents. They ended up some of the top scientists in the whole world. Go ahead and tell Albert Einstein that he didn't understand what it was like to have an abused father when his dad was being uh, uh, all but they had to run because of what was happening in Nazi Germany. And I don't believe if his dad was killed or almost killed. But go ahead and tell people that have made great things out of their life, lives when they have escaped Nazi Germany or even some of the nonviolent Syrian refugees. Go ahead and tell them they don't understand, you arrogant prick. A little more than an hour before this whitey, arrogant, rotten piece of human filth went on the Grammys were to start, Kanye West wrote another series of controversial tweets, this time asking white publications to not write about black music. First of all, I don't believe that you are black music, Kanye. You aren't even music. You are a piece of untalented shit floating down the sewer of modern music. You have no talent. You are a matter of hype and record company conglomerations. That's all you are. Having said that, if you want to call this in the hills and Fetty Wap black music, if what you are saying means that the rest of us of all colors can hear less of you, then I hope you get exactly what you're asking for. Because it is your music that has destroyed American music, destroyed American culture, and you can tell that to your whore wife that also hates your tweets. Yes, I said it. West singled out the New York Times, Rolling Stone, and Pitchfork as white publications that should not be writing about black music. They put, Rolling Stones put this untalented swine in a Jesus thorn head dress and had the audacity to say that they don't support black music. Rolling Stone is some of the worst coverage to ever hit music, partially because they support people like you. And hopefully, now that you've said this, they won't. What are you going to say? Listen to this. The system is designed for colored people to fail. And one of our only voices is music. And our only way out is music. Yeah. Because we don't have black politicians. We don't have a black president. We don't have black football players, basketball players, doctors, lawyers. No, none of the people on city council, mayors. No, 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 no. Only music. And of course, music only counts if you can drop N-bombs and mumble into a microphone and make up words because you don't have enough diction to rhyme anything if you don't. One of our only ways out is music. Well, if that's the case, that's an epic fail, dude, because you don't make music. You make trash. And friends, you're listening to the correct views, giving you absolute facts. Do not tell me this man is an artist or I'll tell you you're an idiot, and I'll be right. 
Uh, friends, you can donate to the correct views if you want to at the correct views at hotmail.com. Just send me an email there. I'll let you know where to send any donation that you have. Make sure you go to uh, check out David Lake's work. You'll find him at the Media Speaks on YouTube and change transportation. Get a hold of them. Let them know where you are and let them know that you heard about it on the correct views and you're going to be getting a discount just because you're a listener. Good night, friends. God bless.